In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to create your own very first auto landscape material. And before I knew how to create a proper one, I thought all you needed was a couple of textures so you can have that switch from the flat parts of the terrain that will automatically transition to an inclined part to the second texture. But I quickly realized that that wasn't enough. So in addition to automatically changing textures based on slope, based on the angle, here are nine things that every auto landscape material must be able to do. Number one, it must assign a texture based on slope, based on the angle. So the basis of any auto landscape material is the ability to automatically texture your terrain based on slope. Now this can be done in a few different ways inside the material editor, but the most reliable way I found is to use the world align blend node. This material expression is the foundation of all auto landscape materials I create. And I covered this in the previous tutorial for how to get started with this world align blend node. Number two, it must have two or three textures. Our landscape material can have two or three textures that will automatically change on your terrain based on the slope. Two texture auto material is the simplest and most effective one. And three texture auto material is a bit more involved. First texture is used for the flat areas. Third texture is used for the angle slopes of the terrain. And the second texture is used to blend between the first and the third texture. So here in this example, I have two texture auto material. And in this example, I have three texture auto material. And the second texture is helping to blend between the first and the third. You could have more than three textures, but it doesn't add more functionality other than introducing another blend in between texture. So this becomes difficult to manage. So I would recommend that you stick with two or three texture auto landscape material setup, and this should be more than enough. Number three, must assign a texture based on height. So the world align blend node only works based on the slope, based on the angle of the terrain. If you want to assign automatic texture to the landscape based on height, you'll have to use absolute world position node and then combine it with the world align blend setup. This will allow you to have the texture switch based on the angle on a slope of the terrain and then you can add additional texture based on the height. And this works really well if you want to have, for example, snow to appear on top of the mountains at a certain height of your terrain. Now there are additional controls that you will need to add to make this height texture blend more naturally using a mask. Otherwise you'll have a solid line across the entire landscape at a certain height, which doesn't look good. So you'll have to add that mask blend control to make it appear more natural. Number four, must have the ability to paint textures manually. Auto landscape materials by itself does a great job texturing your terrain automatically but you can have more control if you add a manual painted texture layer. This will allow you to paint extra textures on top of your automatically generated ones for things like extra detail or roads and pathways. You do this by adding a landscape layer blend node and creating a landscape layer info into the existing auto landscape material. And it will allow you to paint any texture you want on top of your auto landscape material very important and handy feature. Number five, must have controls to blend between textures. Auto landscape material by default will have a soft blend between two textures or three textures. It will work most of the time, but if you want to control and have a hard edge blend like so, you'll have to set this up inside the material editor by adding edge intensity adjustment with a power node, then using a texture mask for more natural appearance. So this would give you to define how soft or how hard you want the blend to be between two textures. Number six, and this is a big one. If you have an environment where foliage isn't required, outer landscape material will work as is. But for environments where you also need to spawn foliage at the same time, along with your auto landscape materials, then you need to add this functionality. This will allow you to spawn foliage on your terrain automatically without having to use the foliage tool or foliage volumes, unless of course you want to. 
So for example, you could spawn grass foliage and flowers on the grass texture. And when auto landscape material changes to dirt on the steeper slopes, it will automatically spawn rocks and dead grass or whatever else you define. To do this, you have to implement and use the grass node. And the power of this is if you decide to sculpt your landscape, auto landscape material will appropriate foliage and texture the terrain automatically. This is a very powerful technique and this alone will save you a lot of time. Number seven, must remove spawned foliage on manually painted layers. So there is a problem when you have foliage being spawned on the terrain automatically and when painting texture layers manually, it will not remove the spawned foliage. And for this, you must add the ability to have foliage removed as you manually paint texture layers by using the one minus node. It's a bit tricky to set up, but once you do, it's pretty easy to reuse across any auto landscape material. It is a very important feature to add if your auto landscape material has manually painted layers and automatically spawned foliage. Number eight, must have the control to tile textures correctly near and far away. So this applies not only to auto landscape materials, but to any landscape material you create. Often the terrain textures look good near the player, but at a distance, the repetition becomes extremely noticeable. There are many tricks and techniques you can implement to reduce and eliminate this repetition. First, you need to set up to control tiling. Then you need to control tiling for different distances of the same texture. And this will greatly reduce the noticeable texture repetition that you always see. Number nine, must have parameters set up to propagate into the material instance. You want to create auto landscape material once and then reuse it over and over again for different projects on different landscapes. For this to happen, you have to add various parameters within the material editor to allow control of changing things like albedo and normal map textures, adjusting texture blends, changing the slope and the angle where the texture will appear, and so on. So here's a list of all the parameters you should implement into your master auto landscape material. Edge intensity, edge mask texture change, ability to select an edge mask channel, edge mask texture tiling, roughness controls for each texture, changing albedo and normal map textures, adjusting albedo tint and shade or brightness and darkness, changing color of the albedo textures, tiling for near and far away textures, world align blend slope and angle controls, and the ability to turn on and off grass node, which controls foliage spawning. And with all of this, you will have a master auto landscape material that can be reused in many different environments and adjusted per level, per map. So having a simple auto landscape material is not enough. You need to implement as many of these into your master auto landscape material for a complete procedural auto landscape material. Now, if you want to learn how to create your own auto landscape materials from the very beginning, following every step in the process, I've created a tutorial course that will show you how to do that. It is UE4 Auto Landscape Material, the complete guide to creating and using procedural auto landscape materials. In this course, you will learn how to create auto landscape material based on terrain slope, how to create auto material based on height, how to create two and three texture auto materials, how to control edge blends between textures so you can have a soft blend or a hard blend, how to set up ability to replace textures so you can reuse this auto material on any landscape, on any terrain, and just swap textures, how to spawn foliage automatically on a specific texture so this will allow you to create huge worlds with auto spawn foliage very quickly and how to manually paint additional texture layers on top of your auto landscape material for additional detail. You can now download this complete course with all the example files and start texturing your landscapes quickly, effortlessly and automatically. You'll find the link to download this course in the description box below this video or within the blog post. So stop manually painting your large terrains. Create your auto landscape material 
and begin doing this automatically so you can spend more time on actually creating your environments.